Welcome to 321 History, 76 years of film and 10 minutes. How do we get from this to this? Well, it's a long story, but I'm going to show you how six movies released from 1936 to 2012 made the superhero film genre what it is today. What even is a superhero film? Well, according to the Dictionary of Film Studies, there are Hollywood films adapted from comic books and featuring heroic characters with superhuman powers. This sounds simple enough, but a lot more went into the behind-the-scenes creation of one of the most epic genres ever. I've included each of the following six movies in my discussion because they were fine to the film hero as a convention. That is, a uniquely powerful, distinctly dressed protagonist who interferes in the lives of ordinary people for good. We're about to cover 76 years of film history in about 10 minutes, so fasten your seatbelts and let's get started. We'll start with our first key moment, 1936, when the superhero serial Flash Gordon was released. This black and white cliffhanger series followed Flash, a human superhero, and his adventures in space battling the evil Emperor Ming. Flash Gordon was groundbreaking because it was one of the first popular films to feature a distinct uniform use dazzling sci-fi effects, and create ongoing lore about one character to be revisited in future films. Flash Gordon was released as a serial, which meant viewers had to come back every week to see what would happen to the planet's dashing defender. The special effects and mind-blowing technology we see in Flash Gordon can't be fully appreciated in modern terms. But let's just say that without this guy, we wouldn't have nearly as cool spaceships and movies, and who knows, we might not have believed we could put a man on the moon. But anyway, back to the story. Let's jump to 1940 and our next key moment, the Mark of Zorro. The Mark of Zorro follows the escapades of Don Diego de la Vega, disguised as Zorro, or the Fox, in order to distribute vigilante-style justice to the common man. He opposes the evil Luis and his henchman, Captain Pascal. Of course, Zorro wins and gets the girl in the end, all with Z-snapping, swashbuckling finesse. Now before you pass judgment on the stereotypical looks of our hero du jour, remember that all stereotypes come from somewhere. In this case, Zorro set some important trends that would carry over into many of our favorite characters in the future. I'm Batman. But Zorro did more than establish the masked man as a stereotype. It's important to note that the 1940 rendition was not the first or last Zorro film to sweep theaters. There were two other renditions of The Mark of Zorro, one in 1920 and another in 1974, but the origin films gave rise to a plethora of sequels and spin-offs, each adding to the existing lore of Zorro. These included the mask, the sword, the sign, and just about every other accessory of Zorro imaginable. In other words, Zorro laid the groundwork for building on audience familiarity with an existing hero. And this brings us to our next key moment, 1958, and the release of The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. The plot is not much to write home about. It follows the familiar story of Sinbad the Sailor, who saves a princess and encounters mythical beasts like a cyclops and a giant bird called a rock. But whatever its narrative shortcomings, Sinbad had a huge impact for special effects. The producer Ray Harryhausen was inspired by Disney's skeleton dance to create a new form of stop-motion effects called Dynamation. His efforts were recognized by the National Film Registry in 2008 and described by an established film historian, Tony Dalton, who said, Not only was it a box office smash in 1958, but it has continued to make money through the intervening years. Many of today's fantasy filmmakers acknowledge the film as being a major influence, including Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, and Peter Jackson." End quote. So the seventh voyage of Sinbad has endured in a commercial sense, but more importantly, it cemented special effects as an integral part of the superhero film in years to come. Our next key moment, the arrival of Batman in 1966. Everyone knows the story of Batman, and how a rich kid turned vigilante saves the day with his trusty companions Robin and Alfred. And while you may recall his epic face-offs with the Riddler, Penguin, and Joker, you may not realize that Batman's first and most important battle was with the TV set. The 50s and 60s were not the easiest for the big screen, because TVs were more affordable for the general public. 
filmmakers had to put in special effort to make movies colorful and larger than life just to get audiences back to theaters. And Batman was a smashing success. Released by 20th Century Fox in 1966, the movie capitalized on the popularity of the Batman TV series released a few months before the movie. Not only was this commercial genius, this move established a spectacular and can't-miss-it element of superhero movies we had come to expect. Batman also appealed to teenage audiences, which was crucial to box office success then and now. Hot rods, electric guitar music, and of course, a teenage sidekick in a tight costume all drew in the younger crowd in droves. In 26 years after Batman's first appearance in comics, the film harnessed the power of nostalgia for the parents in the crowd as well. Fast forward to 1978 when Superman came on the scene. With his stereotypical good looks, iconic costume, and chivalrous ways, Christopher Reeve stole the hearts of audiences as Superman. A survivor from the destroyed planet Krypton, he thwarted the plans of Lex Luthor, saved his love interest Lois Lane, and made glasses cool again as the reporter Clark Kent. Superman is notable for crystallizing the stock characters that would dominate the genre for years to come. That is, the near-flawless savior figure, the comic villain, and the love interest, spirited but still in need of rescue. The characters fit nicely into an expected box, behaving in predictable ways. These characters are boosted by a spectacular backdrop, which is almost as important as the plot itself. At this point in the genre's evolution, the superhero film solidified into the modern norm. That is, a dazzling and special effects-laden adventure where a uniquely powerful hero catches the bad guy, saves the world, and gets the girl in a neat hour and a half package. This formula was so effective that viewers remain satisfied with it for a good while, but our story isn't over yet. As the culture became saturated with superhero lore, cheap action figures, and cliche t-shirts, audiences needed something new to keep their interest. And that something is our last key moment, the arrival of the Cinematic Universe serial. The Avengers was the first climax of the new era in 2012, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Marvel Studios started the trend in 2008 when they released Iron Man. Basically, instead of releasing standalone features, studios would create expansive alternate universes for their films to take place in. These would introduce characters one at a time. Eventually, the climax film would throw all the heroes together in a theatrical, world-altering conflict that fans just couldn't miss. This happened for the first time in The Avengers in 2012. The film followed the pantheon of heroes as they saved the world from Loki, traditionally the Norse god of trickery, and, in later years, fashion. The idea of assembling a diverse group of heroes turned the tides of the genre for good. The production of DC's Justice League and Marvel's long-awaited Infinity Wars proved that the trend is indeed taking hold. So, there you have it. 76 years of super and 10 minutes. But if you want to stick around, I have a few predictions for the future of the superhero film. When you look at the past of the superhero film, it almost seems like there's nothing to add. I mean, after all, Flash Gordon started it off, Zorro brought the mask, Sinbad the effects, Batman the cool gadgetry, Superman the charm, and the Avengers, of course, assembled it all together. But if we've learned anything from all that, is that superhero films will keep innovating as long as they keep selling tickets. So after the current phase of superhero films wears itself out, I predict that a new kind of hero will emerge. It'll be when everyone least expects it, but will resonate with the youth of the next generation and take the world by storm. We've always had heroes, whether Greek warriors or knights or cowboys, and that's not changing anytime soon. So next time I go to see a new movie, I'll pay close attention because, who knows, it could be the Flash Gordon of the 21st century. And this has been 321 History. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Hi, I'm Captain America, here to talk to you about one of the most valuable traits a soldier or student can have. 
patience. Sometimes patience is the key to victory. Sometimes it leads to very little, and it seems like it's not worth it. And you wonder why you waited so long for something so disappointing. How many more of these? <laughs>